Yehovah Malak Olam Olamad Yehovah Malak Yami Rages The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness. A training in righteousness that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and ignorant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkanu, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone, and great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath, in the cherishing and in the nurturing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of His glory, to understand that every day we live on this earth, it is the dealing of Lord God according to His loving kindness. If ever He would dealt us according to our sins, none would stand before His presence. Yet He remembered us that we are of dust, and bestows upon our life to understand the burnt wick in the lampstand every day which has to be removed and put into the snuff box and take once again the fresh wick taken with the oil and be burnt. Thus is our life once again using the privacy of our priesthood to rebound. Since the word of the Lord of God says, Those who worship Lord God must worship Him in the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and in biblical truth. If ever you live, you need to live in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If you are living, make sure you walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If you are walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then make sure that you are marching in the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Dear brethren, the eternal purpose of Lord God, which He has given to us through the Church, now through us, the poly class, the much variegated colored wisdom of Bible doctrine has to be made known through us, through the church, right now. To the cosmocrators who have rebelled against the Lord God and given the power for us to judge these angels. And he says, Greater is the one that is in you than the one who is in this world. So that you shall not add anything to these words of the Lord. But rather remembering that every word of the Lord of a God is infallible and ignorant. That's what the psalmist writes for us in Psalms 19. Every word of the Lord of God is pure. There is nothing needed for us to add for it. The word itself will speak when we go back to proper exegesis and teach the truth, the word itself is enough for us to teach to you. Because in the original languages of the scriptures, we have the right meaning of the word of the Lord of God inculcated and kept for us. 
the translations so that we could come to know the taste about the true Lord and develop our vocabulary, develop our thinking. Having known now your platform or your base or your mediating link, through that mediator link you walk now to look into the original languages of the scriptures. And thus you come back to the reality of the word. You come back to teach the truth. You come back and make up your soul to be filled with Bible doctrine. So that we can understand the right exegesis we can learn the right purpose and the true purpose of the pastor teacher given to us is to rightly divide the word of truth and you can understand the word Gamal when we read in Psalm 119 in verse number 17 deal bountifully and the word in the Hebrew meant to say right from weaning right from making it to grow up, right from causing it to become ripe, right from the way you have been taken from milk and grown up to a full mature man to take the great glory of Lord God since the creation is awaiting for the manifestation of these adult sons. Right from that says the word of the Lord our God. When you have been there to accomplish and to perform the will of Lord God the Father, he says, deal bountifully, Gamal. Deal with me to be ripened, deal with me to be weaned, deal with me to be absolutely accomplishing your work. Because I am thy servant. And since we are the servants of Lord God kept alive on this earth as per 1 Peter 2, 15 and 16 to shut the mouth of this ignorant and arrogant man, we should learn to understand that the rest of our life, he says very beautifully in the Hebrew, the rest of my life, Kea, the true life, the life that I am spending, the life that I will live because you have given me the prophetic counsel the counsel, the end from the beginning, the things what would happen even after a thousand years, even till to the minute details to be performed. Giving us this counsel, he teaches to us how we have to deal with the Lord God. And thus he goes on to teach for us and to prove for us many, many great things in the Bible. So the rest of my life, as you have taught me the end from the beginning, I shall live. I shall live only to God thy word. That's why the Lord of our God dealeth with us bountifully in the church age. Every believer purpose before the foundation of the world he has chosen us to the praise of his glory. Every believer being kept alive to understand that they have been given this great privilege so that to witness the truth, to understand the truth, the eternal purpose now through the church age to make known to them what are the bountiful riches of Lord God in dealing with us, to make known to them the principalities and the powers and the rulers and the authorities when we put upon the armor of Christ how we could trample Satan under our feet rather than trembling and fearing on this earth. So dear brethren, to this eternal purpose of Lord God, what he has given to us Ill till to the minute details in the polypoi class, the manifold wisdom of my Christ, why is it we need to add something which is not there in the Bible? Why can't we go and dig? Do you know why the reasons of your plagues? He teaches to us very specifically in Revelation 20 to 18. Since you're adding something to the divine revolution of Bible doctrine, that's why. And the reasons why you're going through such plagues is that you haven't come for exegesis. You haven't come to dig. 
you haven't built them upon the original thought of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the great logical progression of its thrust, which is so beautiful for us. As we read one of the verse, particularly revealing, we read that in Psalm 119 in verse number 16, but the word in the Hebrew is sa'a, meant to say completely blinded up, completely doing the will of God the Father, and we do not want to go anything apart from that. So this we read in Isaiah 40 to 19, who is blind like my servant? Who is deaf like my messenger? Who could be like him? So here we need to understand the concept which is so much essential for us. And that's how he says, if you would only mark well what I have told you to do, if you would have given your entire heart, mind and soul to that what I have marked you to do, you would have shalom upon shalom like rivers. And the righteousness of Lord God, Sitkeno, like the sea waves. Only if you would have hearkened, the word is kashab in the Hebrew. It meant to say to pay attention and to mark well and to give regard. What a word it is for us. Today as well, in this Christendom, to know what is the fellowship in this mystery doctrine of the church age, to the intent that now the fallen angels can learn the word of truth through our lives being manifested as reality in the church age. Not to be hindered, scandalizza, but rather making known in before itself or making aware to look about this life before itself so that tomorrow you shall not have ignorance to plead before the judgment seat of Christ but rather you have given everything he says in advance and that's why we have been calling you every day to look not to add anything to the word of the Lord of our God but rather prick your ears so that you can alert an animal the way how you have to use so that you can listen to give heed, pay attention. And you have to pay attention for Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 6. You have to pay attention as Samuel told Saul to pay. But he did not destroy the Amalekites, the mission which was long back. Even there we read. In Deuteronomy chapter 25, destroying the Amakalites, you shall not have false scales with you. The work what I have given to you, you have to do it completely. But here we find the first king, Saul, failed. He destroyed not that which was really worth, but he destroyed useless and vain things. Because he could not have the year called as Kashar. In Deuteronomy 6, he says, the Shema, Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. Make up your children to know about these words. Let them have these years of understanding. Kashav. Because men failed. As you prick an animal to look and to become alert. So the word of the Lord of our God should alert by pricking your soul. Every breath of your life. Whether you are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Are you still engaging yourself into the details of life? You should look upon these standards very carefully, very alertly. But the problem is, we haven't understood them according to the divine word of the Lord. The Lord God says with great pain, Oh, that you would have heard. Oh, that you would have pierced your ear like the way how they would prick the ear of an animal, sharpening them to become alert. That's the word kashav meant to say, to prick up the ears, sharpening them like an alert animal, so that you can become, to give heed, to pay attention, to attend, and to become attentive. That's what... Saul failed.
And today the parents are also failing to fulfill the word of the Lord, our God. In the lives of these children, when they sit, when they wake up, when they stand, when they walk. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. Shema. So dear brethren, the things what Lord God has prepared and kept for us on today's date, not to add anything to the word of the Lord our God, but rather to teach what is right and perfect in the sight of Bible doctrine. Let's use the privacy of our priesthood to know the truth and to be blind and deaf like the servant, my Lord, my rock, my God, my Savior, who was on this earth, set forth a pattern for us to do what is the great will of God the Father. So thus we shall look into the word of the Lord our God and learn what is more important after this prayer in the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins. Have to learn kashav. Understand the word how like sharpening an animal they would prick. You need to be pricked with the word of the Lord of a God in your soul to do the will of God the Father. We shall learn them after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the pale wonders of this great word of the Lord of a God. Infinitely divine Holy Father, being thankful once again to come into the presence, to remove the burnt off week of yesterday and put on the new week, so that Lord, in the fellowship of the oil mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we could learn thy truth and expose thy truth. Since every day is a brand new day, and every day you have been renewing your mercies upon us, those, though we don't deserve it, neither earn for it nor work for it. At our Lord, being thankful for this great calling of you on this earth, help us to worship thee in spirit and in truth all the days of our life. And teach that which is needed for us. In reality, not just quoting the scriptures in vain. Help us, Father, to do thy will. And see if there is an offense within us, lead us in the way of everlasting truth, sovereign Lord. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father, the Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Enlighten us in this message, what we're going to talk, thy words. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. The word kashav, what a meaning it is for us. In Deuteronomy we look, Lord God gives a commission for them to utterly and totally destroy the Amakalites. No way you shall have any fellowship with them. In the same way, have now the first King Samuel, the first King Saul was been sent to destroy the Samachalites. Here we find how Saul sinned. And here we read, Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the Lord, of words of the Lord. And thus said the Lord God, I remember that which Amakalite did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way which he came up from Egypt. And now go and smite Amakalites and utterly destroy all that they have, and spare them not. Slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. In this passage, we need to learn. Here it is the revenge of Lord God upon those people. Even the same way it is the revenge of Lord God upon Satan to take through us for the taunt what he has put in Luke 4, 4 through 12. Particularly in verse number 6 through 9, Satan says, I have all the authority. Just bow down to me, I will give you the glory of this world. And what glory Satan can give to my Lord? The world has lust of flesh, lust of eye, and pride of life. And Satan thinks it can taunt my Lord. And yet, it says that it can certainly give all the glory of this world to my Christ. But Lord God says, it stands written. 
and he now uses the same authority what he has given to his disciples and he teaches to us through Jonah, through James and John. Though the reputation of the prophet Jonah was not been there at the place of Nineveh because when the words of the prophet they speak and they not come to pass they say that such words should not be feared or that prophet shall not be feared. Yet Lord God dealeth in his loving kindness, teaches to us. In the same manner, what he says to James and John, you do not know what manner of a spirit you are filled with. Because he wants to deal us with great loving kindness. So when he has chosen those disciples, he says, I have given you this authority as per Luke 9. When in Mark chapter 6 we read. So that great authority, what he has given to them, he says, what you bind on the earth will be bound in the heaven. What you release on this earth will be released in the heaven. And he says, we have seen how Satan fell like a lightning star. And he says, rejoice not for that, but rather rejoice your names have been written in the word of the Lord of our God, which is nothing but the book of Lamb of Christ. The same thing he teaches for us in Philippians 2.12. Work out in fear and trembling your salvation or the deeds pertaining to your salvation because you shall know every knee and every tongue shall confess before his presence. So you shall work out your own salvation. That's what he meant to say, which is nothing but the deeds pertaining to your salvation in Christ. Be careful to perform them wherewith in Ephesians 2.10 he teaches to us before the foundation of the world we have been ordained to walk in those deeds. So we are being the wife of my Christ. The church, he says in Isaiah 61, 10, you shall be the weapon of the Lord God. You shall be like a jewel to Lord God. And being the weapon, the work of Lord God, what he has said for those Israelites when he was coming out, he sent through Samuel to test Saul whether he would utterly destroy or will faithfully stand for the work of the Lord of God or not. And he sends Samuel to ask Saul to go and destroy the Amalekites right from the beginning. What did the Amalekites do? He says for us in verse number 2. I remember what this Amalekites did to Israel. How he laid wait in the way which he came up from Egypt. Therefore, now go and smite those Amalekites and utterly destroy the taunt and the temptation what Satan made to my Christ. Lord God knows very well, saying to the point, I will give you authority, just bow down to me. What a great insult it would be to the Creator. And that's what Lord God could remark those words as, I remember. When he has chosen these Amalekites to be destroyed because they were against the will of God the Father. When the people of Israelites came along and he says, I have seen their pain. In Exodus 3, 7. Both mental pain, physical pain. He says, the pain of your fathers, what you have gone through, I have seen them, I need to deliver them. So he has chosen Moses, they are calling to him, he says, I know their pains, or I know their sorrows in the KJV. But in the Hebrew it meant to say pain, both mental and physical. I know their pains. And while he was delivering them out, the Amakalites, the way how, they came along not to help the Lord God and even Moses writes in chapter 25 destroy the Amalekites completely and utterly. Yet here the Saul, the king was been given go and destroy them. I remember what they did to me. If Lord God would remember our sins we couldn't stand says the word. If Lord God says, I remember, then just imagine what a great wrath it would be. What a great pain in the heart of my Lord it would be when we are considering it in anthropomorphically, applying that in the standards of anthropopathism. When he remembers something, he says, this Amakalites, what they did I know, how did they live, wait I know. 
in the same manner when Christ our Lord our God was been there in this pilgrimage trip after his 40 days and 40 nights of fasting when Satan comes and taunts my Lord yet Lord God showed them the way though it was successful for 4,000 years bold enough and the way how it was successful we look because it thought it can also be successful over the humanity of my Christ but Lord God opened up his mouth saying it stands written even there he says it stands written but the taunt what what Lord God has gone through on behalf of Satan he remembers that he remembers that taunt and since for that taunt he says for us today in the church age the heaven and the earth the authority is given to me go and make disciples of all the nations why do you worry about satan if there is anything trample satan under your feet it cannot even touch you he says in 1 john 5 18. In 1 John 4, 4, he gives a great caution to say, Greater is the one that is in you than the one who is in this world. In 1 John 3, 9, he says, You are having the sperm of Christ. Therefore, you are having Lord God in you and you cannot sin. In 1 John 2, 20 and 27, he teaches to us the unction what you have received from Lord God, the Holy Spirit, teacheth you all things. There is no one needed for you to teach because you have to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. That's what it has been needed most in our pulpits today. To be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit has become a tough path for us. Because we do sin either by thought, word, or deed. And in 1 John 1, 1, 2, 3, he says, The fellowship is true with God the Father, God the Son, and Lord God the Holy Spirit. And we are calling you to have such fellowship, walking in the light. If you don't walk in the light, you are in darkness, then you have the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound and get back into the fellowship of Lord God the Father in heaven. Because... He is a forgiving Father. And remember His goodness. Our condition before Him, when we are not in fellowship, He says, you are dead, you are alive again. You are lost, you have been found. You have to get something to your mind to remember what the goodness of Lord God, just goodness, that's for fellowship. But what else after you come back to fellowship? Remember the commission given to you. Remember the way the taunt of Satan was. That great critical passage, Luke 4, 6 through 8, should certainly prick your heart in enlightenment of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. It says, I have all the authority, Exusia, the same authority he gave to the disciples, the same authority he gave for us today in the church age. That's what we read in Ephesians 1. Verses 17 through 19, particularly in verse number 19, given from the Dunamis power, you need to manifest your iskun strength and make force the Kratos power made known in the great realm of your true operating will. You have something great over here, dear brethren. And how you can have these four words for power? Because you have been given authority. Lord God has given me this authority, he says, and I pass it down to you. What do you do? Go and make disciples. And therefore, he says, you can trample Satan under your feet. Without giving authority, Lord God cannot, so you can trample Satan under your feet. But the problem comes when you don't go back to look the original languages of the scriptures. The problem comes when you're not going for exegesis or isagogics and categories. And every pastor teacher has been ordained in the presence of Lord God the Father to exegete the word, to isolate the word, to categorize the word, not even to let go iota upon iota and carrera upon carrera, but rather lead them in the word of truth, teach them word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, and make them to understand dispensationally the right concept in rightly dividing the word of truth. So has given us this power to equip you to know what is the eternal purpose to the intent that now the principalities and the powers and the rulers and the authorities can learn through us, the church. Therefore, he uses the word kasav, smite your ear, so that you can understand by pricking an animal the way how it has to become sharp, to pay attention, to mark well. And that's what he uses with the great pen in Isaiah 48, 19. Oh, you would have marked well. 
Or you would have hearkened to my words, how peace would flow like rivers. How righteousness would be in the midst of you like the sea of waves. But you did not hearken unto me. The same thing what here, sounded. And we look that passage, it certainly pricks our heart. The same way how in the 16th chapter, when Lord God says Samuel to go and anoint the one whom he has chosen, but Saul, but Samuel fears about Saul. When Lord God says to go, you have to go. He has provided for you all the means. In the same way here, Saul was given all authority from Lord God to go and destroy. You would have destroyed. He specifically mentions, tomorrow you know how we are, man is such kind of a culprit nature. He would say, Lord, you have sent me, but you did not mention whom I should destroy. But the infallible and inherent word of the Lord of God is very clear. He says, you need to destroy man and woman, infant, the one even in fact who have been weaned, suckling, ox, sheep, camel, and ass. He said, everything you shall destroy. He mentioned specifically, even to the minute detail. Even for us in the church age, in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, trampling Satan under our feet, demands to be every breath in the fellowship of Lord God. And he mentions, grieve not, squelch not, wax not, put not to test Lord God, the Holy Spirit but rather be under the controlling, indwelling, mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and do the will and the work of Lord God. That's what he clearly mentions for us. And how to mention that? He teaches now through the church, the polypoikilas, the manifold wisdom of Lord God should be manifested, and the principalities, the powers, the rulers and the authorities should learn what is this mystery and what is the fellowship of this mystery which we, the church, have been given, have been given and called to enjoy this great life. That's what he is giving us, this great privilege. What is this mystery? What is the fellowship in this mystery? And what a great privilege we have to enjoy these standards in life. It's really great to enjoy these standards in life. Every minute detail, he says, Lord God has given us a sound mind, not the mind of fear, of timidness. He says, sound mind. He has given the mind of love and courage, 2 Timothy 1, 7. Why you worry? Therefore, he says in 2 Timothy 2, 15, Go back and study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God. In 2 Timothy 3, he teaches to us, There will be people like Janus and Jambres to withstand you, but with the power of the word of the Lord of our God, you can easily overcome them. In 2 Timothy 4, he teaches to us, Caruso ton lagan, herald the word, in season and out of season. And he teaches to us what you need to preach, the mystery doctrine, Colossians 4, 2 through 6. And how you need to teach, 1 Thessalonians 5, 27. He takes an oath from you in this diamond witnesses. The oath which is not taken properly in our pulpits today. The horizon, the region, where you need to take, he says, anagenisco, to analyze and execute the word of Christ. Take it to the ministry, our keepers, wherewith Lord God has given you. In that ministry, what you do, anagenisco, anagenisco, this epistle in Lavadicians, he says in Colossians 4. The same epistle to be read, he uses the word thrice. Why the word anagenisco? To analyze and to execute the word of the Lord of our God. Because that's what you get, nothing to add. You will teach what is the truth in it. You will dig every word. You will learn the principle of exegesis. Not just you add something, not just you quote something from the Bible, which is not the vocabulary of original languages of the scriptures, though it may resemble the point. But the depth analysis, the polypoikilas, the manifold wisdom of this Sophia is not found there. And today you find literally watered down translations. 
losing out the essence. Every word is so important. One word is enough to change your entire life. And we read Philippians 1, 9 through 12, each and every word. How much of doctrine is there to build doctrine upon doctrine in those verses? In fact, indeed, this word kasa, what we are reading now in Isaiah 48, 19, in comparison to 1 Samuel 15, as well as Deuteronomy 6, why you need to train up your way, the child that they have to go, uses the word kasa, because they have to be alert, mark well, so that you want to make your prayers to some known saint or the person who comes, because every believer is a saint, and you remember that he has done great things and you call them to become Ravadas and XYZ as a holy man and you say pray for us and that man you think he prays and your son will have peace no the word of the Lord of God is so specific they would hearken unto my word and hearkening unto the word of the Lord God he says pierce them like the way you sharpen an animal by piercing it. Make them to mark well the commandments of Bible doctrine. Make them to mark well. No excuse for it. And what a great pain we find in our pulpits today. How many of the people are really marking well to their children while they are young, while they are still kids? How they need to be trained up in the word of the Lord of a God. That's why the woman has been given such a great patience. To teach the children the real life, the truth in life, the truth in power. Not just to think kids have been given, it was an accident with your husband. Malachi 2, 14 and 15 says the reason why you have the kids. It is for the Lord's purpose and for the Lord's work. That's what he teaches to us. It is for his reason. It is for his will. And therefore, these kids have to be taken the process of kashav. If they haven't been pricked, if they haven't been alerted, that's why Lord God, you know, sometimes he kept that book in, saying to the point, these people will be always with you like thorns and thistles to remember you haven't done the will of God the Father. Likewise, he has kept for us our sufferings. Whenever we miss the mark, you know very well you are suffering. And why you suffer? You don't have truth. Where there is truth, there is freedom for you. And you are not continuing as a disciple in the word of the Lord of a God, you will not have freedom. And when you are not having freedom, there will be no peace. So you shall know very well when you are missing the mark to do the will of God the Father, you have been taken out from the peace. And then you shall come back to understand what is that I have lost. And you will realize that you are not doing the will of God the Father for what he has commanded you to be alive. In this world, precious word of the Lord of a God alone can show you why you are here, what for you are here, and from where you go from here. It is only the knowledge of Bible doctrine which has been given to us to say to Nagad, if the word of the Lord of a God hasn't given this information, no man on this earth would ever know what for he is born. He would never understand what is his purpose. He would just accomplish his life to live. Vanity among the vanities in the vexation of his spirit under the sun. Only pleasure you would have with the wife of his youth, he says in Ecclesiastes 9 9. And yet, not obeying the word of the Lord of a God, besides you cut your flesh, he says in Jeremiah 44 7. But the great and sad part we look in as in Jeremiah 44 8, he says, You have not only cut off yourself, your soul, your nepesh but also you have become a curse and a reproach. The same thing Nagini uses in 44.12 of the same Jeremiah chapter, and he says, Given to you according to your desires of your heart, 
You have become vain and vague. You have become an astonishment. You have become a ruin. You have become a curse. You have become a reproach among all the nations of this earth. Do you know what is that word earth over there again? It's Eretes. Double seven six the code being there. And it refers to your inner man. And by that we meant to say unbelievers are superior morally than you. They at least knowing not God. They worship creation as God. And they are sometimes far more better. But you are cursed and reproach, he says. Among all the nations of the earth, what happened to your soul? It has been blackened out. That's what the meaning over there it meant to say. You have not only cut off your flesh, you have not only cut off Karat covenant, but also you have cut off your soul and besides cutting off your soul, you are proving to the world you are the shameless creature. But having the name of Yahweh, if ever you have been believing in the Lord. And you are getting reproach like the way how Saul bought the reproach. He did not destroy that which was demanded to destroy, but he destroyed which was useless, vain and worthless things. But till to the minute of the details, Lord God has given to you this information. He says such and such, such and such. Even at the end of your journey of your life on this earth in this church age, being a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you may say, I have fought a good fight. I have done the will of God the Father. But when you go back home, Lord God would say, you have destroyed that which was vain and vague. You haven't done that which I have told you to do. I have called you to grow from disciples, to join as user beyond, from there to grow up to the standards of Daulas, which is nothing but obeyed to be the servants of Lord God. From Daulas, I wanted you all to become Dasmias, completely committed to Lord God as prisoners in Christ. But you did your charity works. You did that which was feasible according to your thinking. According to the way the world has ran without knowing the truth. You did that which was useless and worthless in my sight. I called you to join as disciples. From there to grow up as grammatias, New Testament scribes, New Testament theologians. From there in return I have called you to go and make disciples. And you have to say, not just we made the disciples, but you have to prove them the witnesses he teaches to us. He has given us this great burden, dear brethren. He has given such a great burden, whether you believe it or not. The world is in search of these adult sons, he says in Romans 8, 16 through 19. The creation is awaiting for the manifestation of these adult sons. We are not taking Exodus's point over there. If not, you will look how eagerly or how badly the world is awaiting for you. And tomorrow when you go back home, you may say, Lord, I fought a good fight. And don't worry, we all will stand for those seven years of judgment before the Bhima throne of my Christ. What you have done, what you haven't done. Whether it was vile and vain, or whether it was gold, silver or precious stones, you will be evaluated, don't worry. But as far as for your concern, if you are still alive on this earth, remember, Lord God gives still to the minute details what we need to do. And in the minute details, he says for us, go and make disciples. Because Lord God remembers the way I have Satan taunted the humanity of my Christ. <laughs> Stating to the point, I have the exusia authority in my hand. And this exusia authority, what I have in my hand, it said, Go down to me, I will give you the glory of this world. And Lord God will take in return the glory of the world by, by making them disciples. How? Through us. By the Christians, the church, what he has chosen. 
so that through the church you can grow up as joining disciples into grammatias and in return making disciples and making known to the world that you are the witnesses with Christ from the beginning and you haven't been disrupted or making yourselves to be in the scandal itself but rather you are available to do the will of God the Father because you are not ignorant about the cunning fables of Satan but rather you know what are these devices of Satan long back and you walk in the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit to trample that Satan under your feet but what happened over here Saul never pierced his ear if you would have learnt the fear of the Lord he would have trembled at every word of Bible doctrine the revolution given to him if he would have been forgettable hearer he would make his men to write down what all they need to destroy having zeal without knowledge will not work but here this man neither had true zeal towards Lord God's work neither he was worried about the true knowledge of Bible doctrine the fear of the Lord if he were in a great zeal to destroy the Samachalites he would have taken great heed towards the knowledge of Bible doctrine what was being given to him then the prophetic revolution through Samuel but he never had that zeal this is the same trend in the present Christendom. You're born as a Christian, coming to church as a Christian, either a nominal Christian, conventional Christian, making yourself as a pastor for the sake of your belly or for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley, never analyzing every word to look what does it mean to say, why they have been penned and kept, what is the purpose of it, never able to realize what is the burden in it. Just you come, you come, you come, that's it. If Saul was the first king, Christ of Lord of God made the church to be a king and to be a royal of priests. So we have been made kings and priests. Our kingdom of priests we are. Basilia and Basilian, we read that long back. So if we have been made kings and priests for Christ, then we need to learn we have also been assigned a task, a burden. Therefore he prays for us in John 17. They have kept my word. As he says in John 17, 12, None I lost except the son of perdition so that the scripture might be fulfilled. So we have been given a specific task in the geographical location where we survive to do the will of God the Father to the highest. And therefore in the place where you are born, in the region where you are born, First, if you aren't growing up to become the disciple of Bible doctrine, then never you will understand how, though your neighbor is perishing without knowing my Christ, how much you are accountable and liable for it. Never you will understand. Because you're just happy in your terms. You're just happy in your way of life. You're just happy to act <laughs> ritual without reality in it. Because that's why you come weekly once to the church, isn't it? And therefore you think monthly once paying the tithes is enough? I will be richly blessed. Me and my family will be taken a good care by the grace of the Lord. You are really playing yourself havoc. Because you are thinking you are destroying the real things. No, you haven't even destroyed to come to know what is the meaning of destruction so that you can crack that barrier and look what Lord God says to destroy. The same thing we look over here. He came not with the zeal, he came not with the knowledge. He refused it. If he had real zeal, he would have taken intense and careful examination and marking well. The same thing in the present Christendom, people are coming to the church as pastor teachers 
not even worried what is the burden of a pastor teacher and have changed that burden and the title of pastor teacher into something called as Ravada or Episcopalan or Presbyteros, whatever names they can have. They have changed the true burden and the concept of PT. If Christ our Lord of God is a sheep shepherd, in Mark 6.34 he says to us, when he has seen those people, he has moved with compassion and he taught them many things. He did not go to do any signs and wonders, but he taught them many things. Whenever you look the sheep of the Lord, being sent as a shepherd from Lord God, you need to teach them. That's what his practice was when he says, when he passed out the examination in Luke 4, 13, and he says, Satan left him for a season. And afterwards, he comes in the ability of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and he straight away went and he taught many things. It was his regular custom, he says, in 4.16 of Luke, to enter into the synagogues and to teach. And the, there the word we read again, Anaginisco, to analyze and exegete the word. It was his custom, we read. If you are being sent by the chief shepherd with a bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church, then learning the word of the Lord of our God, understanding the word of truth, your burden will be to exegete and teach the truth. That's what the true shepherds are. Because they love to destroy everything that which is concrete as a mental block, stumbling blocks in your mind. Because people think following some rituals is enough, paying some tithes is enough. Because when the pastors who come to the church, they just love to beg from you and take from you your milk, your wool, your blood, your flesh, your meat. And not to provide for you the truth. They will never provide. They will ask you to come weekly ones. They will say, enough for us in this week, we shall continue next week. But the word of the Lord of God says, without fail, Lord God would pronounce his judgments day by day. The word of the Lord of God says for us, as we read in Proverbs 8, 34 through 36, blessed are the one who waits upon Bible doctrine every day. In Luke 19.46, every day he taught them the word of the Lord of our God. 2 Corinthians 4.16, though the outward man perishes, inward man has to be renewed day by day. How many passages for us? Because in Luke 19, we read that, comp that combination when he says, You have made my temple, the house of prayer, into den of thieves. In comparison to Revolution 2 and 3, we read, it is not just now den of thieves, but it has become Satan's synagogue. It has become Satan's throne established there. It has come to Satan's copulation point. Then how much more alert we ought to be today in the present Christendom? How much more alert we need to exegete the word of the Lord of our God? How much more alert we need to train them up to the praise of Lord's glory every breath? And how many people are really concerned to teach the word? It's a tough question, isn't it? Tomorrow, Lord God also would church with the same standards. Because he's shown forth for us in Mark 6, 34, Luke 4, 14 through 16 or 17. Even, he says, in Revelation 20 to 19, eliminate not even a single word. The things that I have given to you, teach them. If you eliminate here, you will be eliminated out in the tree of life. You will be eliminated out in the entrance of Bible doctrine to the gates of his city. You will lose it. There is no chance. You may think you can plead, you can plead ignorance and arrogance and say, Lord, in earlier I was not aware about that. Therefore, he says, you have your free will. You have your knees. Because the world will come to bow down before his presence, we read in Isaiah 45, 23. Because he said seven times, I swear, 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 that every knee shall bow. In the same way you have your knees to bow down before the Lord God. You have your knees to teach before the Lord God, to ask him, Father, guide me. That's what he says in Psalm 16, 7, Lord, I bend my knees before that presence. That's the word Barak in the Hebrew meant to say, I kneel down in that presence, O Lord, teach me thy counsel. That's what even the psalmist writes in Psalms 119, verse number 13 and following. Kneeling down, I learn thy word, O Lord, train me up, I have to walk in this pilgrimage trip. The same thing Christ, our Lord, our God, 
when he was being served. Flesh is indeed not ready, but the spirit is ready, he said. He went two steps of hurt and he knelt there and he prayed to God the Father to master this flesh. And you're not worried to kneel down before the Lord God and know your life. Because you don't find such men to train you up. And you may say, Lord, I will plead my ignorance and arrogance. No way, you're inexcusable, dear brother. You're inexcusable to claim your ignorance. Therefore, the word of the Lord God says, we have to be the spirit of prophetess. Fellow slave, I am with you, he said to Apostle John. I have come to witness to you the truth. I am also one among a martyr like you in witnessing the truth. Therefore he says for us, the one who want to be holy, let him be holy. The one who want to be righteous, let him be still righteous. Eti, the word, still. And the one who want to be still a Rufo, let him become Rufe. And the one who want to be unjust, let him be unjust. I have my rewards. What a great pain it would be for us to look. Though such great grace bestowed upon our lives, day by day we know where to do our lives. His mercies we don't deserve it but at the end of the day we are not destroying that which is called for us to destroy but we are destroying vain and vague things that's what Samuel though he said Saul to destroy with the minute details Saul heard the voice of the people the people always represents the flesh what the word says, whether they may be hearers or forbears. One of the great president of Southern Theological Baptist Seminary, John Albert Brados, coming with his homiletic subject, teaching to these people, I will freely train you up. He never found one man for six months, and after six months, he found one man who was blind, who came to learn that theology. That is the hardness of the man's heart today as well. They don't have to come and take the truth. They just want to spend their time in the details of life. They just want to spend their time. Though the word of the Lord of our God has been given for you graciously every day, we hardly find few men who would carry their cross and follow my Christ and walk according to the will of Bible doctrine. We hardly find them. We hardly find. Very few will come because they don't want to know the truth. And Satan blinds them because where there is truth, there will be peace. And in order to learn the truth, you have to be in the liberty where with Christ our Lord our God has set us free. And he has liber and he has made us liberty from these old sin nature activities, asking you to be always in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. But you don't want to be in the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit controlling you. If you are in the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit, you would know. You don't want to be a curse and reproach among all the nations of this earth. You want to have a new Bible doctrine. You will learn you want to make up your life to the standards of truth. And you wouldn't desire anything else apart from the truth. Because you don't want to become an astonishment, a curse, a reproach. And blaspheme the name of my Christ for what cause has chosen you to be called as little Christ in this church age. And yet, what do we find? We find people being happy to destroy weak and frail things. 
and not to do the will of God the Father. Dear brethren, think over these issues. Why do you want to perish in your foolishness? Why do you want to become like Saul? Why can't you just hear the word of the Lord our God marking well so that you can have peace like rivers and righteousness to shine forth in your lives like the waves of sea? And why do you want to end up in lies? But Lord God says, I remember what these Amakalites did. He would say in the same manner, I remember what Satan taunted my son on this earth. But I have called many sons unto his glory by giving you the same authority what Satan can think it can give and I have given you far above than that in your, in your positional truth in Christ. And I have called you with a great commission to go and destroy the works of the devil by making everyone on this earth to be a disciple of the word of the Lord of a God. And we know very well we are not marching according to the will of Bible doctrine any longer. And what are we practicing? We are destroying that which is vain and vague. But never we have come to destroy what is true and what the Bible demands and what it is. So afterwards, when we look in the concluding verses particularly, And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Did he perform? And then Samuel said, What meaneth then this bleating of his sheep in my ears, and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, They have brought them for, from the Amakalites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, I will tell you, I will tell thee what the Lord hath set me in this night. And he said unto me, Say on. And Samuel said, When you were little in thy own sight, I it was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. And the Lord sent thee to a journey, and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amakalites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but did fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag the king of Amakalike, and have destroyed the Amakalites utterly. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And Samuel says the lessons for us. Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, the Lord God has also rejected thee from being king. And this is what the fate of many people are today in the present Christendom. And it says in verse number 4, Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in Telaim, 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. Saul came to the city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. And Saul said unto the Canaanites, Go depart, get you down from among the Canaanites. Amakalites, lest I destroy you with them, and he showed kindness to the children of Israel when they came up to the Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amakalites. And Saul smote the Amakalites from Havilah until thou hast come to shore that is over against Egypt. And he took Agag the king of the Amakalites alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But we look in verse number 9. 
Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and all of the fatlings. <laughs> and that is what the word meant to say, which were of a second sort, and the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them. But everything here, Lord God, the Holy Spirit pens for us. Saul destroyed everything that was vile and refuse that they destroyed utterly. Then the word of the Lord our God comes to Samuel. Do our lives also destroying that which is vile and refuse? Because dear brethren, without hearkening to the voice of the Lord God, many people are walking in their own will. Therefore we need to understand as we read the word for while is nambize, which is nothing but disdained, which is held in contempt, or what could be called as worthless, to think like a scorn, wild person, and refuse, which is nothing but vanishing off. That's what to be waste. And these other people, the word uses very specifically as masses in the Hebrew, which has been defined by Strong to say, figuratively to waste because they are with diseases. They're not worth. That's what the word masses mean to say. So here, Saul destroyed that which was vile and refuse. It is not the human excreta as refuse, but he says masses. Figuratively, these people were with disease. What disease? Spiritual sicknesses they were. And he destroyed them, which is not worth. And that which was being told, he did not, including the oxen. So even if we can think and say, I have done half of the work of the Lord, it doesn't matter. Therefore, he teaches for us in 2 Timothy 4, I have guarded the doctrine that I have given in my hands to guard it. Psalmist says long back in 119 verse number 17, when you have dealt bountifully, bountifully or gamal with the servant of Lord, I have guarded thy word, the remaining part of my life, completely. So to know from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, you need to be aware to make up your time and not to destroy that which is vile and refuse. And the greater you spend your time in this world, in frantic search of happiness, it will be like the way we read in Job 8 verses 14 through 19. Though you may think you can have confidence in your home, it will be not worth, he says. It will be destroyed because your home is like a spider's web. And your home you have built upon not obeying the voice of the Lord God, but you have built upon the voice of men who have come in the form of sheep as pastors, but who are ravenous wolves from inside. And that's what these men are. In order to know the true shepherd, you have your knees bowed down before the Lord God and pray. Jeremiah three fifteen, as Lord God says, I will send shepherds after my own heart, who shall feed you with knowledge and with understanding. Don't waste your righteous time, dear brethren, because you have been sanctified and kept apart in your treaty past to the praise of His glory. Do not mix it with vile and vain things of this earth and fail to do that which is right and perfect in the sight of the Lord. Think over these issues. Life is too short. The greater you fail to casual your years, the greater you are missing out your righteousness before the Lord and peace like rivers before Lord God. We shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Spirit enlightens us to lead and to do once again to burn in his new wick and teach the truth so that we shall add nothing 
If we add anything, we are adding plagues to our own life, that is sicknesses. And we shall not eliminate anything. If we eliminate anything, we are being eliminated from the standards of his true life given to us in heaven. Think over these issues. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments have been dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. Inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that they believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour. That is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to carry so thon lagan. Herald the word in season and out of season, because Buddha want my witnesses where it have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in wearing Trinity, followed by Babylon in our hands, and number two diamond from my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire and very coast will be our witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how ever the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you decide. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is for us, O Lord, to learn that you still remember the things pertaining to the Amakalites, what they have done, but Saul failed. At Lord, you teach a lesson from us that the purpose and the ministry which are given to us to be indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, with a great authority. Let you still remember the taunt of Satan which made to my Christ under the Texas authority, thinking that it has all the power over this earth and it can give all the glory of this world. At Lord, you have called us to make disciples and bring back these people to you and to destroy the works of the devil totally and utterly, not even a single thought, but rather getting every thought into thy captivity of Christ and opening up our mouth in thy word, teaching thy word, and did entirely relying only upon thy truth in the power of Lord get the Holy Spirit. Help us to win this battle to the power wherewith you have called us in our treaty past. So Father, we commit everything into thy mighty hands. Bless us by this message, make it a source of blessing. And such as diligently, Father, see if there's an offensive way, lead us in the way of everlasting truth. In Christ's much less pure, gracious name, we praise our Lord, the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and not only challenge us by this message. Amen.